a warm welcome to all of you today the speaker is dr manoj manoj kurian manoj kurian is in the charge of world council of churches ecumenical advocacy alliance the world council of churches ecumenical advocacy alliance is a global network of churches and related organizations committed to campaigning together on common concerns for justice and humanity dr manoj kurian is a medical doctor he has been with us for many programs and a warm welcome to dr manoj kurian a warm welcome to all of you for this program over to dr manoj kurian thank you thank you very much uh, uh, professor thank you very much uh, professor mathi koshi uh first of all i you know i'm really grateful for this opportunity and uh, it's a wonderful uh, i think globally when we see the the uh, the church of south india uh, especially it's the ecological program is a is a trail blazer it's a great it's a great uh, beacon of hope Uh, and i'm glad that uh, 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 many while many many people are doing many programs i see this particular program is very precious because it is sustaining you it is building you up uh, in an education program bringing very very good uh, uh, perspectives from different uh, parts of the world and from various um, authorities well i um, uh, my i come from uh, i come originally come from malaysia but i am from my father and mother are from india and uh, and i as a child i was sent to boarding schools in india so i from my childhood of course i, I speak many uh, because i was boarding i was in boarding school in india in uh, tamil nadu and in kerala and i did my education uh, in uh, in india in karnataka in uh, to be a doctor in kmc manglo and then in cmc velo so i have uh, I, and i spent 10 years uh, in india as a uh, as a medical missionary working in north india and different parts of india so it's always you know i'm very close to the churches in india uh, i uh, and i've been working with the wcc for many years so that's that's about me uh, but though i am an, uh, a medical doctor i have been working on various issues uh, i have been also been coordinating since 2015 the ecological and economic justice team of wcc so today uh, our uh, presentation our our topic is uh, is life and 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 the and the living planet so so let me uh, i will share the screen uh, i will uh, Uh, yeah i would like to i would like to address this uh, uh, what do you call this presentation uh, help you take you through this presentation uh, through uh, this this topic with this uh, powerpoint presentation what i will also do uh, i will also i will also uh, share this presentation through a link soon after my talk are you able to see it now yes we can see uh, okay let me let me just... many slides are come came to us okay so you know i think what is the this uh, the world is in many ways a very uh, a very unique Uh, the earth is a unique planet <clears throat> this is the picture that was taken uh, in december 24 1968 uh, it was a picture taken by uh, by a, an astronaut william anders uh, in the apollo 8 mission when they were going around the earth around the moon so this is this is actually nearly 3 386000 uh, 240 kilometers away 
from the earth they were going around the moon and then like we see the sunrise in 1968 they saw the earth rise so this was this was the first picture taken of our home planet from outside the planet from from this from the perspective of the moon and and, and this is a very a very very beautiful uh, picture and then what happened was what is so beautiful is that they in fact uh, when when this it was a christmas day and and and, and they read the first chapter of genesis and they made it and and they spoke to the whole uh, world from the uh, from that uh, spaceship now so it's a it's a very beautiful uh, scene and then of course this reminds us the psalm 104 reminds us that this uh, that the <clears throat> that the world was made by god and of course it clearly indicates that it was not just made for human beings and uh, it was made for all the creatures this is made very clear now what is what is so beautiful about this planet is that uh, we do not know any other planet like this and uh, there are so many millions and millions of, of 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 creatures in this world and we don't even know actually because it is they said that so as a, a, these are all scientifically proven that what i'm giving all the numbers are all not it's all clearly scientifically proven and evidence based so most of the most of the uh, creatures we don't even know we don't even know because we are just discovering life so this is the picture of a, a new frog species which was discovered in the western ghats western ghats of course which is uh, you know where uh, you, you see is 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 an area of is called a biodiversity hotspot and uh, but the problem is even before we know what what is happening it is being destroyed at a rapid speed pace all the bio, all the biodiversity in this world now when we say it is a living planet it is quite amazing because it is literally teeming with life now this the picture of a small worm it's called microorganism called a uh, nematode uh, this was taken from 1.4 kilometers be below the surface of the earth so you can imagine that even so deep down the earth even where there is no oxygen no light you have creatures living some of the living creatures deep down in the earth are getting their energy from electromagnetic <laughs> electromagnetic uh, radiation sir? radiation from from, uh, from uh, you know so various it's it's i could be electromagnetic uh, power Hello? from radiation Hello? and the next one this is about the as i was saying the living planet around 8.7 million creatures there are eukaryotes and uh, you know eukaryotes are more complex uh, creatures with the mitochondria etc so it is you know bacteria and there are different forms of living creatures you have uh, bacteria uh, you know eukaryotes are more complex and there you have many many eukaryotes and you can as i was <laughs> telling you most of these creatures we don't even know are existing but the problem is we are destroying the earth at such a rapid pace that we are destroying it before we find out so this was the frog i was telling about which was discovered identified it was discovered it was been there of course and there are many 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 species like this that are we don't even know so this is the nematode small worm that was taken from 1.4 kilometers below the surface of earth so even when they go down the ice shelves in the antarctic bottom kilometers 1 kilometer down deep within under the ice shelf you will suddenly find um, 
uh, creatures living below. So, because they are managing different with different life forms, managing with different energies. Now, now we talk about people. The people we are we are actually around uh, by early next year, the population of the Earth would be around eight billion. Eight billion means you know that is a there are you know how many zeros there are. There are about, uh, it's not million, there are about nine zeros. Um, uh, one million is six zeros and billion is uh, three more zeros. So, so there are eight billion people uh, in, in, in the earth. Uh, nearly one point, just about 1.1 billion is in India itself. So one by seven population is in the Indian subcontinent. And uh, we are quite a lot of people, but of course the people have increased at a rapid, rapid pace. <clears throat> but it is not, but people say that we are destroying the earth just because there are more people. <clears throat> that is not exactly correct. Because, you know, the people who consume the planet are not the, the, the people who are in large numbers. People who are cons destroying the planet are the are when when you are living, you take more than you give. <clears throat> so it's not necessarily because there are a lot of people. <clears throat> so the population increase in the world is actually coming down because uh, <clears throat> in about uh, by the end of the century we now it will become eight million. But the end of the century it will not go much beyond nine billion. <clears throat> that is what they say. <clears throat> and if we live uh, within uh, in, in a way that we don't damage too much, it is clear that we can still <coughs> maintain the earth. Now, the living person, so what, what is a living person? I mean, you, you, we see as a, as, as, as a living person. So how do you see how do you see the human being in this planet? Would you like to? Would you like to? Uh, would you like to? Is in, in, in anyone would like to share some thoughts? How how do you? What do you feel of, of humanity, human beings? Because in the Christian understanding, uh, you know, we are created in the image of God, right? The screen sharing. Screen sharing. No. Uh, yeah, I've stopped the screen sharing. I'm just I'm asking. So if anybody has any ideas. I'm asking people if they have some thoughts. How do they think when you say life and the living planet? How do you value the human life? How much, how important is human life? Because in our, in our understanding, the human being is created in the image of God. But what about the other creatures and the other rest of the world? Can, how important are they in your understanding? You can type your text or maybe one or two, two, maybe two, people can give a short response to that because you know we are talking about life and the living planet we are talking about human beings and the living planet so we will, before we going and go into it can one or two of you have a short reflection on how do you value the rest of life and your life human life versus the rest of it any 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 volunteers Short, short uh, response. You can just unmute and speak. Say like, you know, when I'm saying, uh, you know, you're talking about, you know, God created human beings in God's image. So what about the other creatures? Of course, the Psalm 104 said, that God created the whole world for everybody, all creatures. But is that what we, we, that's not what we see now. We are actually destroying forest. We are destroying, we are killing snakes. We are, you know, whatever we see that is not convenient. We'll, uh, not only in India, all over the world. Like for example, in Switzerland, I'm living in Switzerland. The forests don't have any wild animals. I mean, anything that is inconvenient has disappeared. So no wolves, no bears. Only some deer is there, and once in a year they'll go and shoot it. 
Any thoughts on that? Then I'll go into the human, what is a human being and all that. So it's a, should I, should I ask some of you? So Reverend Jairaj, B. Jairaj, why don't you say something? <laughs> any, any, anybody, just, just, just some thoughts. Or do you want me to go ahead and then you'll go into the discussion later? What do you think, uh, uh, Dr. Matthew Koshi? It might be better to go later. Yeah, but we should share our surroundings with the uh, living creatures. Yes. And plants. Yes. We should plant our own. Example, surrounding my house, I can, I should plant some small plants at least. So Mark is saying that Mark Promo is saying that we should share and, and create an environment. Small area, a small area. Whatever small area, correct. So that, that that's that's a good a good very important thought because I think uh, you know like the living person. Uh, so now. Why, why are we why do we have to share now so this is the picture they they drew it you know this is the the, the kind of engravement that they sent about human beings about a picture electronically based in the in the record that was carried on board the voyager one and two space spacecraft because this is a spacecraft that has been going around going into the space and there is a, a beautiful picture from this spacecraft billions of kilometers as it exited the solar uh, solar, uh, the solar system, the from the Voyager two, they that spaceship took a picture of of, of of the Earth, a small speck. So those, so we are hoping that if somebody finds this, they will. This is how they have depicted the human being. They have indicated with a planet and you know and where they come from and all those things. But more than that. Just for your information, actually, each living person, you know, is, 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 uh, is interconnected with nature. The number of cells in the average human body is estimated to be 30 trillion. So it's like a, you know, it's like we are ourselves are like a cosmos. 30 trillion means 30 followed by 12 zeros. That is 30 trillion. But what is interesting is the number of microbial cells living in and on our body is actually 39 trillion. And each, so that is, the by weight it might not be same, but what I'm trying to say, each person is actually not an individual. It's a community. And each person's gut bacteria is unique based on its diversity and the composition can be a predictor of one's health, longevity and well-being. And 70% of all immunity and immune cells exists in the gut. So diabetes, weight, uh, or, uh, or tendency to put on weight, or tendency to get cancer, or ability to combat infections, etc. All are linked to the microbiomes in our gut. So what I'm trying to say is that if we think we can live as an individual, we are completely mistaken. Because we ourselves are not an individual, we are a community. And the beauty is that if we are able to eat a, a diverse diet, if we are going to eat only a particular kind of diet with highly processed meat and very, very living in very clean environment and not being exposed to anything, you, your immunity goes down and your ability to protect yourself goes down. So actually, you know, living out, spending time outside, having contact with animals, having contact with soil, eating a diverse diet with a lot of uh, vegetables and nuts and fruits, etc., are, are very vital for our health. And even when we go, if we survive as a species, and if we are going to become an interplanetary species, we will have to carry 
you know, the microbiomes in, 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 in our body with us. So, uh, you know, even in a different planet. So we, 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 we cannot live apart. But the problem is there are in two folds. One is the climate. Climate is changing. We have, we have, we have, so you can see the, the graphic change in the global temperature from uh, over the centuries. These are times since the time when the temperatures were measured. So, you know, every year it is becoming increasing and increasing and increasing. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a shocking. I mean, you know, for example, even in the cold areas of the world, it is becoming warm. It's a, it's a frightening change. But why is this happening? I mean, there, is a, there are issues of also, um, uh, you know, the, the, the carbon dioxide emissions are also increasing. So carbon dioxide and methane, etc., <clears throat> they, they actually create the warming of the atmosphere. And you can see that this is, it is, it is steadily increasing. But global warming uh, is, is, apart from that, we are also doing, uh, so temperature and carbon dioxide. So these are both, both these things shown together. Carbon dioxide per million. So there is a significant rise in temperature. Now, what is, uh, what is this being caused by? One is, you can see majority of it is for energy use. We are producing energy for industry, transportation, energy for building use, agriculture, forestry, and land use, waste industry. So these are all the reasons why we have, we are producing this carbon dioxide. Then you would say, well, I mean, we have to produce this energy, right? But the importance is that we have to figure out ways in which we will produce less amount of carbon dioxide and methane. And this also the food production also is contributing tremendously to the uh, to the carbon uh, to the uh, the CSC the 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 global warming uh, producing gases. So you can say you can grazing uh, land act crop land use, but manure manager fermentation of the guts fertilizer pesticides. All these things are actually producing uh, global, uh, global, uh, you know, the, the heating, uh, the, the greenhouse gas emissions. GHG means greenhouse gas emissions. So now, but this climate change is actually producing a lot of problems also for health. So I'm just showing it is it is it is not just that it's just you need fans etc. It's a it's producing a lot of problems, a lot of problems. So this kind of uh, you know the, the graph shows you how air pollution changes in vector ecology, increasing allergens, uh, the water quality uh, changes. Water and food supply impacts are there. Environmental degradation is there. And it's very, very significant because over the last 50 years, this climate change has actually changed not only the, the, the it has is, it is actually increased uh, not only the temperatures, it, the temperature rise is also causing increased storms and uh, weather pattern changes. Over the last uh, 50 years, there's five times increase in uh, natural disasters caused by typhoons, uh, etc., drought, etc. Then the other thing is also that uh, we are uh, we are facing um, um, also the food chain is also being impacted. The food chain is impacted because uh, I, 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 the temperature. Okay, I, I'll just yeah. These are just some facts here. So about, you know, there is more diarrhea, there is a weak health infrastructure, this is producing uh, warmth, uh, it is producing pollution. Um, but, so there is individual, but also the health of the planet, it's affecting global change, longer periods of drought, increase in the number and duration intensity of tropical storms, forest fires, you must be experiencing it. It is. It's a, every place. It's it's changing. Like for example, in the Arabian Sea, the, the it has been tremendously increased the amount of 
Cyclonic storms used to be very rare in the Arabian Sea, but over the last 50 years, it is becoming more and more frequent. It was more common in the Bay of Bengal. So this is because of the warming of the Arabian Sea. Then, but then the other is the health of the planet itself is declining tremendously. Over the last 70 years, nearly 70% of globally monitored populations of vertebrate species, fish, mammals, amphibians, reptiles, have declined. So it's a, it's a, it's a, so it's a, it's a very, very um, frightening uh, situation. And this is, this is uh, quoted from uh, the UN Secretary General's message on the International Day of Biological Diversity on May 22nd. He said, species extinction rates Hundreds are rates are hundreds of times higher than in the past 10 million years. So you can see the number of species over from the 15th, 16th century, how the rate of decline of species. So the frog I showed you are belongs to amphibians and they are the most damaged because you can see all the waterways are being cut, the wetlands have been drained, paddy fields are being filled up. I mean, amphibians are dying, mammals are being wiped out, birds are being wiped out. You know, it's, it's a tremendous, tremendous uh, damage to biodiversity. So, you know, and this is what coming back to the sea level rise and warming oceans. So warming oceans is a severe problem because the small creatures that, that depend on uh, the bottom, the very, very, very bottom of the, uh, of the food chain is something called plankton and zooplankton. And the warming oceans are moving, are causing these tiny creatures in the seas to move towards the cooler parts of the ocean, towards the Arctic. So that means the tropics are slowly having less and less of zooplankton um, and phytoplankton. So that is the food for the fish. And so the fish stocks are also collapsing. And of course, we are incessantly heavily doing industrial fishing and not allowing the fish stocks to recover. And of course, there's acidification of the oceans. That means coral uh, reefs are being damaged. Almost 40% of the coral reefs have been damaged in the earth. So th th the situation is, 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 is really, really catastrophic. So when you see, why are people moving out? Why do you think people are moving out and why do you think poor people from the rural areas are coming to the urban areas, men alone coming to work, migration, displacement? Why do you think people are moving from West Africa and crossing the Sahara and risking their lives to cross, uh, getting killed and raped and, you know, and they are crossing the Sahara and then selling themselves and going across the Mediterranean Sea to Europe? It is not because that they like to be in Europe or like to be in another country. It's simply because climate uh, destruction and 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 the and the and the ability to for livelihood is being deprived, and uh, there is tremendous displacement, displacement, hunger, and there is increasing conflicts. Currently, now, never has there been such a recorded number of displaced people due to conflicts. Now there are more than 100 million people displaced from their homes because of internal and external conflicts. I mean, internally and externally displaced due to conflicts. So it is all interlinked. It is all interlinked. So the, the health of the people, you know, you have, you have, you have also directly impacted by, by health is, of course, the trim and the destruction of the forests can cause various issues. Um, it, it, it costs, you know, the, the biodiversity loss itself. Like, for example, you know, the, 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 the lungs of the earth is the forest and that is being destroyed. So that means you will have more and more heat. Uh, the soil becomes a, its ability to retain water is less. And of course, pesticides and, and all these things are poisoning. But and, and what we saw, COVID-19, why has COVID-19 come? In fact, one uh, every year, one uh, nearly 40, there are about 
one to three or four new diseases coming from animals because we are destroying their environments, we are getting closer to animals and we are getting new diseases from animals. COVID is a disease from an animal. Then that virus has learned how to move from human to human. That's how it becomes a new pandemic. Now, locust infestation. All these things are also contributed by climate uh, change, uh, excessive rains, excessive cooling. So the beginning, uh, end of last year, beginning of this year, there was a tremendous locust invasion, uh, infestation which really wiped out a lot of crops from um, in West Africa, Horn of Africa, Arabian Peninsula, and the northern part of India. So it is, it is, we are actually, you know, we are, when, when, when we read the liturgy of the church, it looks in the church, it looks as if the liturgies which were written in the first few centuries is actually applicable now. The, uh, and the Psalms which talk about protection from, from invasions, protection from pestilence, protections from the enemy, violence, all these things that we see in the Psalms are, are, are coming back. Pollution, heat, fire pollution, etc. Now, so it is, it is, you know, we have a lot of issues, issues of disease, of injury, of loss. So when when these climate change is causing destruction. It causes loss of life, loss of uh, tremendous amount of mental anxiety, mental health issues, loss of livelihood, etc. So loss of hope. Um, so the churches are doing a lot of things and we really need to really work hard. Now, I, I, this is the graph which shows the earth overshoot day. That means in the 1970s, 1970, the rate of energy people used could sustain the earth. But rapidly, now on an average, we need 1.7 earths. That means the amount of energy we use is not sustainable. It is destroying the earth. And different countries, so for example, very highly populated countries like India, actually per capita use of energy is still very low. But wealthier countries are using much more energy. So the more luxuriously you live, more tremendous, like, you know, if you use a lot of big cars, a lot of air conditioner, you're using much more. So it's the rich, even rich people in the poorer countries and rich parts of the world are actually unfairly taking a lot of energy and causing a lot of harm for the poorer people. So, you know, I, this is a picture which I wrote. Uh, the, you know, it's, 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 I don't know whether you can make out. It's, 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 like a, it's like the apple, the earth as an apple, and Adam and Eve are kind of eating it up. So it's a, it's a, it's a now, so this is, the, this is how the, 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 the contribution of, 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 of uh, blow, you know, the, the, the greenhouse gas emissions of the earth. You can see South Asia is still very, very small, but you can see North Africa is small, Caribbean, very, very small. But then you see the United States, Central and East, uh, Central Asia, East. Um, so huge proportions of greenhouse gas emissions are contributed by the wealthier countries. And the problem is that wealthier societies are unwilling to pay for or help financially. Because this climate change and climate issues are, are creating tremendous damage. We don't have to, we, it is not damage in the future, it is already happening. So these are, you know, so these are just projections of if there are no climate policies, if there are, this is the pathway, this is four degrees, 4.8 degrees climate rise in temperature by the end of the century. It's impossible because Earth, as we know, will not survive if, if uh, you know, if we, uh, it will, Earth will continue, but we as human beings will not be able to survive in a, in a situation where it, it, it rises above three degrees Celsius. Tremendous uh, problems will occur. So what is going to happen to, the, to, to you, to your children, to your grandchildren? These are questions we have to ask very seriously. So I, I, I think, I, I think, you know, I think uh, there are a few, few, few questions we can ask, you know. I would say, who am I? Who am I? Uh, 
and and in, in this in this notes i have some notes uh, in in these in these slides which gives you a little bit of uh, the question is who is the other and how do we relate to the other i mean i i give you some some thoughts i mean uh, you know I, there are more details i'm sure you yourself can also reflect more when you say who am i you know am i you know i am created in the image of god and uh, and am I, you know, when you say that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, so there is God present in you because we believe that we are created in the image of God. But are we allowing God to lead our life? And what is our identity? You know, is it is it is it a? There are layers of our identity for gender, our, our race, our religion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But how do we identify ourselves? Um, and then who's the other? And then and, and do we do do we follow Matthew uh, chapter twenty five when when uh, you know verse uh, twenty five to thirty five when when Jesus says you know what you did to uh, the, the least uh, that is the you know the, the the hungry the thirsty the lonely the displaced the person in the jail the the person who uh, needs clothes, you have done to me. So what he is saying, you know, you have to see God in in, in the vulnerable. So do you look at them, uh, you know, in a condescending manner, in a patronizing manner, or do you look at them as 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 manifestations of, of, of God uh, itself? And and how do we relate to the other and to the environment? I mean, if we believe we are one body. Uh, in 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 Christ, um, you know, can one hand be in water and the other hand in fire, and, and say that on an on the whole we are fine? We cannot be fine. So so you know, one hand in water, one hand in fire. So there are no averages in the body of Christ. So when we when we are living in the earth, you know, as a person, as people, as a planet, it is a whole organism. The whole planet is an organism. You know, it's like a, what I what I what I envisage as as, as 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 an image is that, you know, we are in this in this big building called Earth, and what we are doing is we are we are kind of scavenging breaking down parts of the wall to build our own small house below but when everybody does it finally the whole building will collapse on our small buildings so it is it is it's a very important uh, concept so what can we do for the health of the planet uh, so definitely in, in increasingly increasing nationally determined contributions to ensure that global warming does not exceed safer limits um, of 1.5 above pre-industrial levels. Uh, divesting uh, from the fossil fuels, undertaking faith, consistent impact investments for renewable energy. And these are being done by the Church of South India. Uh, she is the Church of South India is a leading example for, in faith communities. Now, of course, agroecology, reforestations, and other activities that add to ecological health and community well-being, preserving the conservation of forests, woodlands, wetlands, uh, and reforestation, protecting the oceans and water bodies. The water bodies, you know, rivers, you know, destroying, you know, you know bringing back life to the river, not you know, not just building dams and mining for sand and you know, uh, draining all the marshes. So, you know, the, the problem is that you need to allow uh, other creatures to be uh, living as well, advocating for regulation and monitoring of pesticides and the an excessive use of, uh, uh, you know, uh, fertilizers. That's his challenge, the policies which actually subsidizes fossil fuels. Like, for example, you know, the subsidies for, for fertilizers and fertilizers and pesticides are coming from the, produced from um, uh, the uh, uh, petroleum products. So we are actually pay our tax money is being used to poison us. 
So I'm not saying that you should suddenly stop using fertilizers fully, but we have to be much more careful in, in, in using the fertilizers and, and pesticides. And, 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 and of course, the issue of farming itself, you know, 70% of the earth's fresh water is used for farming. 40% of all land is used for farming. About 35% of all greenhouse gas emission is produced because of our activities to produce food. And after all that, one third of food is wasted. So you can see what a tremendous problem is food waste. So we have to make sure food is not wasted. Then we have to make sure that we don't indulge in industrial farming. Like for example, you know, what is the kind of chicken that you're eating? You know, uh, chickens are being industrially grown. Like for example, if you, if, you, if you actually weigh the total, it's estimated that the total weight of poultry chicken in the world is 29 times the weight of the rest of birds, rest of all the birds, your peacocks, your minas, the crows, the penguins. So the, 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 the and 90% of them are broiler chicken, which is being given, pumped in with antibiotics, pests in a, and, and given uh, hormones, and all because we want cheap meat and we are eating it tremendously and it is adding to great damage to our health. We are developing hypertension, we are developing cancers. So what are we eating? How do we eat, you know, by not destroying the planet? And this is very important. So what can we do? The health of the planet, I said, health of the people. So we need to ensure the transfer of technological and financial resources to poor, vulnerable communities and countries for mitigation, adaptation, and resilience building. Because it is very, very important. 100 billion was, uh, was promised uh, you know, from 2020. It was pledged in uh, COP15, in Copenhagen. It's not yet happening. Concrete ash actions on loss and damage by further developing the Warsaw International Mechanism for loss and damage. That means loss and damage is happening. The coastal communities are being battered increasingly. We have to invest, increase investment in public health, public transport, and health promoting infrastructure. Like, like the like the what the CSI, we have to promote established green and health promoting churches. And the practice of one health. One health is, is health of the earth, health of the planet, health of the of individual health. So you know, you have to look around. How are you disposing your rubbish? How are you are you composting? Are you uh, monitoring whether uh, pesticides are being excessively used? Are there living creatures around your place? So uh, I, I can I can I can I remember um, um, I visited uh, you know in Kasargod uh, area where there used to be where there used to be this uh, uh, the, the pesticides uh, in the 1970s to 1990s, they sprayed pesticides in the cashew plantations. And it was terrible because it was causing, um, uh, you know, uh, birth defects, etc. cetera. And uh, un until the pesticide was banned, uh, international ban, uh, India did not ban. And I, I visited those places and it, it is shocking how the place was beautiful places it was called i, I remember to the uh, when when uh, uh, talking to a doctor there the place was called swarga swarga of course means heaven but he was saying because of the of the uh, of the pesticide use in the cashew plantations government pl cashew plantations they used to spray it with helicopters it had become a naraka it became a hell no insects no birds no snakes so after 1990s, 1990s, then they banned it. Now uh, life is coming back. It is re returning to uh, Swarga. There are more insects, there are more snakes, there are peacocks, there are crows. So it is, it is unbelievable if we, if we are not careful and if you only look very focused on our own survival, it's our own individual self, we will not uh, be able to live in a good way. So, what can we do? 
you know, health of the people, of the people. Uh, we have to prepare for disasters, crisis. We have to support small scale food producers and buy locally sourced food. Refrain from uh, packaged food as much as possible. Use local resources. Buy from the local markets. Do not go for easy package because package and mass industrial production destroys local economies. It is very clear. This Ukraine crisis has, has been a disaster because 70% of the wheat is produced in Russia and Ukraine. 70% of nitrogen fertilizer is produced in Russia. 40% of sunflower oil is produced in Russia. 90-80% of palm oil is produced in Indonesia and Malaysia. So, so imagine if something happens in Indonesia and Malaysia, palm oil prices will go up. So it is ridiculous. You know, we have enough of you try to use local oils. Try, don't depend on the cheapest. So, you know, you don't have to sustain a global, uh, you know, a neoliberal system. We have to look at indigenous communities, our own good practices, our own uh, environments, and conserve the local species of farm animals, plants, and crops and not wipe out our resilient species, which are very, very important. The biodiversity has to be kept. What can we do for the, the health of the person? Of course, lifestyle change. We have to consume less uh, fossil fuels, um, cut down air travel, adapt non-fuel efficient sources, more of solar. Uh, Overconsumption is the root cause of biodiversity. Uh, you know, don't use too much of plastic reduce plastic don't buy you know boil and use uh, water and carry water in your in bottles don't buy uh, you know mineral waters protect against air pollution and smoke protect yourself from excessive heat uh, take care of your health take care and emotional uh, you know strengthen your youth people respond to the youth because they, they are having uh, issues. They are having a lot of issues and they are concerned about the future. So we have to give young people and uh, indigenous communities, uh, indigenous communities, where I'm saying is these Adivasis and all these people, actually 20, they are only about uh, indigenous peoples and Adivasi communities that are only 5% of the world population. They manage around only 22% of the earth's surface area but they are actually sustaining around 85% of biodiversity. So the Adivasis and the tribal communities and people living in the margins uh, of the society, we see them as weak and poor. They are actually our guardians. And the people who live closer to the earth actually will teach us and help us uh, to survive in this earth. It is not the industrialist, not the person who is uh, producing, you know, making uh, industrial farms uh, and, and destroying the earth. So we have to correct our uh, attitudes and correct our consumption pr uh, practices. Uh, then of course, uh, you know, personal protection against uh, diseases, carrying vectors and taking vaccinations when they will, all those things are important. Now, just to conclude, you know, some reflections, uh, you know, we, in Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52, is a story of the blind Barth, uh, Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus, you know, he was, he was this blind man who was shouting to Jesus uh, for help. So he, he uh, they, they could not make him shut up. You know, they said, shut up, keep quiet. Don't disturb the master, but he kept on shouting, kept on shouting, and uh, and, and 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 Jesus heard him, and asked him, uh, "What do you need? Uh, come, uh, 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 who who is that who is calling?" And he, he the, the biblical text shows that that he was not quiet, and he could not be kept quiet, and when Jesus said, "Come." The only thing he had was a blanket. That he was a beggar and he had nothing else. It is said that he left the blanket. He ran to Jesus. And Jesus asked him, what do you want? And he said, I, I, I want to see. And Jesus said, uh, you know, 
secure them. The, their faith has, has made you whole. And so he let go of the little possessions he had and he moved to Jesus. But at the same time, the rich man uh, the, the, who, 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 who Jesus asked him, you, you have to leave everything and follow me, but you could not. Because I, I think when we have to bring about transformation, personal transformation, and, and uh, societal transformation, we should be able to let go. Let go of habits, let go of attitudes, let go of, uh, of, of, of grammatically. So, you know, it may, may not be just wealth. It, it may be also our values, etc. So can we be the blind Bartimaeus or are we like the rich man, rich man young man who, who could not because he had because he had power, he had influence and he, his father had money and he could not give up everything because he felt that the world uh, you know, uh, gave him more power. So for, the, for a living, for, for a good life and for a living planet, we have to think in a holistic manner. We have to not just think about ourselves. We have to think about our environment of, the, of the, our neighbors and others as part of one body of Christ. And to think that way, we have to be like the blind Bartimaeus, who is clear who that, that he what he wants, and he's willing to give up the only blanket he has. And of course, and finally, Jesus cleansing the temple also shows that we have to be firm. And, and following Jesus uh, sometimes uh, you know is, is 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 not easy. It's not a popular uh, popular uh, among other people. Uh, it also means sometimes you know you you, 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 you it, the consequences can be quite hard. Um, but God helps us to do these things. We are in a we are in a very very tremendously historical moment in the in the life of uh, humanity. As human beings, you know, we have been living probably as Homo sapiens. Uh, this our species is probably around 300,000 years old though we have evolved over over millions of years our, our human ancestors were much more primitive we became like what we are around 300,000 years ago and our species came from africa from the horn of africa and and about 150,000 years ago, our ancestors moved out of Africa. But our human, earlier human ancestors did go before Homo erectus, others went. And there were other human species, a Neanderthal, Denisovian, many other species were already there. But the most, we are the most successful species and we moved out around 150,000 years ago. And we come from a very small community, you know. We are all so closely related. And, and, and the color of our skin is actually a factor of the root our ancestors took out of Africa. If our ancestors kept along the coast and, and, you know, uh, and moved along uh, in the Indian subcontinent and then went up to Australia, in, uh, you know, they walked. And by 60,000 years ago, they reached Australia. Some of us, our ancestors got lost into the northern Arctic circles. There was hardly any light. and they were covered, they became fair. So 20,000 years they spent in the Central Asian republics and you know, Central Asian regions, and then they came and they were mixed. So, you know, when you get blood, when you get blood, you don't look at the color of your skin or, the, or your caste or your gender, you know. We are so closely related and we make decisions on very superficial things. It's all, it's all so, so, uh, so, such a nonsense because you know I, because I work globally and I say there is no difference. We are all one family. And that family of these thousands of years is the Genesis. Genesis represents that hunter-gatherer stage. And when did Cain and Abel came out? It was only 12,000 years ago. 12,000 years ago, human beings started to, to, to domesticate animals, domesticate plants, and they became farming community. And then started the strifes and the fights among people. The first murder, Cain and Abel, is a conflict between the, the pastoralists and the agriculturists. So with agriculture, human beings started to 
patriarchy settled in and we became wealthy and the, the difference between rich and poor came in and patriarchy took root. We started writing only about 3,500 years. The Bible was written only 3,500 years ago, but God is, is ever, ever present, everlasting. We cannot be limited by the written word. The logos in Greek does not just mean the written word. It means intelligence. It means rationality. And logos, as, as the great uh, martyr Justin said, logos spermatikos. That means the, the seed of life is there in every human being. But that seed does should understand that we are not an individual. We cannot live by ourselves. We are interconnected. We are one body of Christ. And for that, we need to respect each other. We need to respect the planet. We need to respect the environment. And even these nations and all these things are, are actually a fiction, complete fiction, because boundaries, you know, viruses and carbon dioxide and poisons and global warming, nothing, no borders can restore them. So we can only take care of the earth together. We cannot, cannot take care of the earth as one denomination, as one nation or one people. Thank you. So we can have some discussions. Now, if you have any questions, you can ask or you can make some comments. Or you can write in the chat box also. So, uh, so, so, so you, you, there was one uh, message uh, from Samuel. Then again, sir, I heard one rabbinic interpretation of Bartimaeus, which states that as per the Jewish tradition, only a few who have received the authority from the Sanhedrin council can receive the Teshadak box offering. He states that Bartimaeus was able to throw away that identity even to receive the blessing from, uh, I, I, I actually don't know because you know I'm, I'm a medical doctor, I'm not a biblical scholar, could be. But what, what is very important is that, you know, the, it is very clear, all these laws are, are you know, the, the Sabbath, as, as Jesus said, you know, Sabbath was created for man and man, not, not for Sabbath. So the traditions and all those things are relative. So all, you know, his wealth and all that we have is relative. So, you know, they say, you know, when you are, when you are in the last moment of your life, what are you thinking of? You know? So it is what you possess uh, is, 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 is completely uses the relevance. Like, for example, you know, this, the, the, the Nobel Prize medal that was sold yesterday by the Nobel Prize winner of peace, he was a Russian editor. That gold could be melted and sold for ten thousand dollars, but in the when he when he sold it in the auction to raise money for the orphans that his government had caused the pain in Ukraine, he got five hundred and fifty million. You know what I mean? Say, you know, wealth is very relative. You know? So it, it all depends on what your intentions are. What is so the what we lose and what we are able to throw away for a tremendously higher value so the values will change it depends it's what you what you perceive i guess Uh, I, I will definitely share the, the presentation. What I'll do is I'll just, uh, in the next five minutes, I'll, I, I will do that. Uh, give you the link also so that you can download it. Uh, but, but please uh, share some of your thoughts because, you know, when you talk about life and the living planet, because the living planet, when we say, what do you think? Do you think human beings will become uh, an interplanetary species? Do you think that we will go beyond the earth and live in other planets? What do you, will, do anyone of you have any thoughts on that? Will we be able to live beyond this living planet? Unmute and speak. 
feel free don't worry about uh, what uh, you know karen is saying no <laughs> technically we can no we don't have an option but but suppose suppose say we you know technologically we improve and improve and improve and improve and we can we find some uh, but what could be the problem there this was asked to uh, actually this question was asked to this uh, stephen hawkins you know the the great scientist who who was who was who could not speak so no we can't live since god created earth for us to, for to yeah the true but god created the whole universe so technically if we are able to create a, a situation we should but the stephen hawkins uh, uh, challenge was this it will take a few a hundred he doesn't know <laughs> like elon, elon musk uh, uh, was saying it may be possible but for the whole for us to have the technology to reach out and establish it will take i don't know at least 100 years i think you know but the question is will we able to survive that 100 years you see that is the problem we may be able to uh, extend but but to develop to that level we need an earth that will will sustain for a few more centuries the rate at which we are destroying the earth we may descend there is a possibility that we descend into chaos and when we descend into chaos and systems go down then there won't be much of possibility of research and you know so you can say a russian society you know 1950 60s they produced produced technology to make rockets and they were the first to go to the moon but look at the russian society today you see so so societies can decline and look at american society like for example uh, look at uh, the, the 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 steve jobs studied in the government school in in in, uh, in 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 california where he became a great man but now if you go to that government school i don't know but i don't think it will produce another steve jobs you know so are we are we investing in our society so that it will continue to nurture and build up the next generation if we don't or if you're just looking selfishly how much money can i make how much money can i make doesn't matter the other fellow is finished so this is the problem the problem is we may, i don't know we may be able to go and become an interplanetary species but we need another couple of at least 100 years and we and we don't have any other earth for the time being so as they say there is no plan b you know there is no plan b 25 how many people can you send to mars and mars is a place a horrible place so you know it is not enough to go to mars so yeah so but biblical uh, what elon musk concept is man may not possible other than earth as per biblical concept i, I don't know i mean if you see what happens is you no know, we the bible the biblical concept see the bible is a is a progressive revelation of god right and it is it is very important to understand the bible and to follow the biblical text and to understand because we as christians we are following jesus and we believe that jesus was born but jesus was a jew and and he he and the jewish community was quite unique because they insisted on universal literacy at least for men and unfortunately i mean uh, it, it was not for all but at least universally every 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 man at least should be able to read uh, hebrew that means every family everybody read hebrew and the holy text so universal education and they documented their their progressive understanding of god so it's like a it's not as if our ancestors if they were whoever they were whatever tribe they were also children of god but the jewish people they call, we call them chosen because they had taken the effort to write and document and understand that jesus our our uh, satguru our uh, ishta deva what one our what we see as the, the god incarnate was born a jew and he never said any any word apart from what 
he quoted from his Bible. That was the, we call the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible. So it's very important to understand. But at the same time, what I'm saying is, as I said, the Bible was written only 3,500 years ago. And it doesn't mean that human beings just appeared 5,000. No, human beings have been there for hundreds of thousands or million long, long ago. God is beyond these things. So we have to keep an open mind, but we have to be rooted to the text and, and to read it and understand the spirit in which it was said. Uh, so, you know, like, for example, you can't just, if you want to speak very limitedly, you know, I can, I, I will tell you, uh, uh, you know, a joke. Uh, one, once, um, I, when I became a, uh, when I became a Christian, a practicing Christian, I, when I was a medical student, uh, I used to smoke for, I was a smoker for seven years. So I was 22 years and I used to smoke. Then when I read the Bible, I came across the, the Bible uh, in, in the 2 Corinthians chapter 12 that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So I was really inspired. And then that word I reflected and I stopped smoking over a few months. So I was very inspired. And I said, then I, I thought I should actually share this to my Christian friend. I had Christian and Hindu friends, but Christian friend who was a smoker. So this was, you know, I, many years ago. So I went to this fellow and he was a good Christian. So I asked him, I said, I quoted the Bible and I said, body is the temple of uh, Holy Spirit. So you should not, uh, you should stop smoking. Immediately, you know what he said? He quoted revelations, which says the temple is filled with smoke. <laughs> you know what I mean? So what I'm trying to say is, you know, so I could not, that was the last time I used the Bible to ask somebody to stop smoking. Because, so, in Revelation chapter 8, it said, you know, temple is... So, how do we use the Bible? We have to use the Bible in a holistic manner, understand it in the context. You know, there was no tobacco at that time. So, you know, so we have to see and their understanding of anthropology. You know, for example, you know, you know, when we see our human beings, you know, the, the, the building blocks of our body, you know, you look at a fly. We have 40% of our genetic material is identical to the fly. So what does it teach you? A monkey is 98% similar. So the building blocks in this earth are similar. So God has created all and every creature is very precious. So we definitely, so when we read that everything is for your existence in the Bible, doesn't mean that you can kill and slaughter and eat and destroy. But in the Tamil, there's a problem. So our ancient people were wise. That means you kill, it's a sin. But it, if you eat that, you are absolved with the sin. So, you know, we have to take the wisdom of our ancestors. We have to understand, not just to be blind, of only say, I will only read the, the text and take the, no, Bible is very important. It's our pillar. But also read other things, read science, read the Kural, read the Puranas, understand what they are trying to say. Because God, you know, God is present in everybody. And it is not black and white. Of course, we, we believe that Jesus' teaching is the, is the clearest. But it doesn't mean that we cannot learn from others and the other scientists and other people. We have to be humble. Because, you know, what are we anyway? So I can give the last example is that, you know, uh, that, you know, they're like, like a spectrum. In, in the audible spectrum, we are hearing only a small band. Visible spectrum of light, we see a small band. So our knowledge is like that. It's a small band in the wide. So uh, Richard was asking, some critics say we humans are experimental species of aliens. I, I don't. Who, I don't think so because you know we we can actually build up, you know, build up our uh, like for example, you know, it's very amazing what we have. We have discovered how the human beings have evolved. We have discovered when our ancestors started wearing cloth. Do you know that? That is around one hundred and seventy-five thousand years ago. How do we find? You know how we found it out? They found out. They found the lice lice, you know, the lice, the, the small insect, lice pen. I don't know what's it called in many languages. It's the, the lice that lives in human cloth. That is the lice. 
and the lice that on the head are different. The lice that in your pubic section uh, parts are different. The, the insect come from a common ancestors, but they are different. So they found out when the when how many thousand years ago these two species divided the cloth lice and the head lice and they divide and they found 175,000 years ago. So that's when our ancestors started wearing cloth. So what I'm trying to say is, you know, talking about aliens, no, we are a species that has evolved in this earth. How else can we be? If you see a small, if you see an embryo of a, of, of a small animal, an embryo of a human, being, it's similar. It's, it's, we are built in the similar way. We are very precious because we have become more evolved and more strong, more, we think we are the most thoughtful. And it doesn't mean that the other animals don't have passion and sadness and all those. Definitely they have. But we are able to act out and you know, we are able to do things right and wrong. And so we seem to be the most intelligent creature. But we are, so in a sense, it doesn't, doesn't look as if we have just some aliens have come from. First of all, we don't see any aliens. So, so I, I think from what we know, we are, we are, we are, a, a, we are a, you know, a creature that is that God has helped create. It doesn't mean that there are no other creatures in the rest of the universe because God has created the whole universe. So we understand this from our perspective, and that's why God, uh, Son came as Jesus. He did not come as an octopus because you know He came as Jesus because you know He wanted human beings to understand uh, God. So. So I will not go more into the incarnation because then it will become blasphemy. So, so yes, uh, Reverend Ashurvadam, you raised your hands. Please unmute. Please unmute. Please unmute Ashurvadam. I, I can't hear you, uh, from Rashwan. Sir, continue, continue it. Yes, please. Sir, continue, continue, sir. We should cover our church rooftops, greenery, so the usage of AC. Definitely, I mean, the thing is, the air conditioning is a tremendous, tremendous damage, you know, we, but at the same time, it is getting so hot. So how do we, we have to, you know, we have to reduce the amount of energy, but that means we have to increase the greenery. You have to in, change the architecture. We have to paint, if it's flat proof, you have to paint it white. Uh, we have to maybe plant things on top. Uh, various things are there, but it cannot be done, uh, done over, uh, you know, over, overnight. And also the Church of South India Ecological, a program is an amazing program. I mean, you don't have to go far. You just have to ask your department what they're doing. They have tremendous uh, experience. So I say you are the, in fact, the best in the world of all the member churches of the WCC. You have done a lot of things. Your schools are great because they are doing things. So now all we have to do is we have to make it more and more, uh, you know, like it should not be just islands of excellence. It should become the norm. That is what that is what I would uh, suggest. Thank you, Manu, Dr. Manuj, for sharing your wisdom with us, and also it was very informative, interesting, and I think all of all of all present here enjoyed your talk. Around 107 persons joined this program, so it's a big number. Recently, 70 people were there. Now it became 107. So thank you very much. I request. I, I, I will just give you the link. Just give me two minutes while you're speaking. I'll just uh, upload it and then send you a link so that Richard, they can. Help. Richard, Aaron, Richard, Anand, is it possible for you to do the concluding prayer? Richard, Richard, Anand. No, yeah, no, yeah. And Alfred, Jeremy, Alfred. Lawrence, Jeremy, yes. Alfred. Yes, 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 I'll do it, I'll do it. Uh, please wait. Shall I do it after uh, Dr. Manoj uh, shares the link? Yes, yes, please wait. Yeah. Oh. 
Or you so, can pray and uh, Dr. Manoj will share after that and you can take it from the chat box. Yes. Yeah, Dr. Ramon, okay, yeah, it's a, yeah, if it's okay with Dr. Manoj, I'm ready to yes, pray. Please, please, please go ahead. I will just paste it on the chat yeah. box. Please say your prayers. Thank okay. you, sir. Yeah, yeah, we'll pray. A gracious and heavenly God, thank you for this day you have given in our lives as a gift from you. Lord, this 22nd class of this eco-theology program, thank you for the wisdom we have learned through Dr. Manoj Kurian on the topic of life and the living planet. Lord, we have learned a lot of things during this eco-theology program. Help us to put it in practice and make this earth a better place to live not only for us, but also the future generations to come. Thank you for the honorary director of this department who has took all the pain to make this course a useful one and help us also to communicate it to our congregation and to the community at large. Lord, as we, go, as we have come to the end of this day, give us a good sound sleep this night and help us to see a new morning and experience the new mercies. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. The link is there in the chat box. You can copy it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Manoj. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. attending and all the best for the rest of the course. And I hope you are yes. able to continue and get the certification and get all this, you know, and then be able to share your wisdom with the congregations because, you know, we cannot afford to have these knowledge, uh, you know, in some small pockets. It has to be general. Everybody should be able to know. And uh, uh, otherwise, there is no movement, you know, because uh, otherwise we'll be just one or two people telling these things are no, no use. We have to make it a movement. And the best is to is through our congregations. And we all can make a big difference by practically living uh, these differences. You know. So we assure you that we have a confident that through our school institutions and through our children, we'll make it as a green revolution in future. Yes, Thank yes. You, wonderful. Sir. Wonderful. I mean, I, I work very closely with Professor and uh, we are so grateful for all that you do and for the WCC assembly also. Uh, Professor Koshi and some other leaders are will be coming, and your work will be will be shown. And Church of South India, I will. I am very committed to make sure that the Church of India, Church of South India's work is shared throughout the world. And so, and most important, I think is is the difference we make uh, in our communities. You know, and that is very significant because um, uh, even you know our communities may be small and may not be the wealthiest, but we will be able to make a significant difference, like the yeast and the salt, as uh, we said in the Bible. Thank you, sir. So we, Thank are you, sir. we are closing the session. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, everyone. Good night.